A while back, I posted this video on why all convolution animations are wrong, specifically when it comes to understanding 2D convolution in neural networks. The reception was largely positive, but there were a few viewers, like this wonderful commenter, who came from an image processing background that had some major disagreements with me, specifically based around whether or not the third dimension was as fundamentally important as I claimed. This really surprised me, especially coming from someone with a lot of experience, because surely convolution for image processing is basically the same as convolution for neural networks, right? Well, no. It turns out that the two different types of convolution are fundamentally different in a very important way, and that's what I'm going to talk about in this video. Let's start with convolution and image processing, because I think everyone is familiar with this, even the people that are neural network developers, because neural network convolution is commonly taught starting from an image processing standpoint, so we can use this as a sort of common ground to begin. Now, I'm only going to talk about color images, because let's not pretend that grayscale is a real thing in 2023. So, starting with that, color is commonly represented on a computer as three values, red, green, and blue. There are other representations, but they're outside the scope of this video, and ultimately this is how most monitors process the color, so it makes sense to use this representation for the rest of the explanation. We think of images as two-dimensional, but to represent multiple values per pixel, we can conveniently treat an image like a three-dimensional array. Fun fact, this is essentially what a NumPy reshape operation looks like. Now, zooming out, we've now got this three-dimensional representation where the dimensions are width, height, and color channel, or specifically red, green, and blue. This 3D representation is going to be essential to the neural network convolution later. For now, with image processing, your particular image processing library might use a different representation, but all the major Python libraries use this one, so I'm just going to stick with it for both types of convolution in this video. Now let's do some convolution, and for that we need a filter. And what better filter than the Gaussian blur filter, because who hasn't seen this one before? The general idea is that we apply this filter to the image and it results in a blurred version of the original image. But it should really bother you that we're applying a 2D filter to a 3D input. A lot of explanations gloss over this part but I'm going to break it down since it lies at the heart of the difference between neural network and image processing convolution. What's conceptually happening here is that we're separating the 3D input into three 2D inputs, one for the red channel, one for the green channel, and one for the blue channel. Then we apply the 2D filter to each of the 2D inputs separately. And finally, when we're done, we stack the inputs back up together into our convenient 3D representation. The main point that I want you to take away from this is that, in the case of image processing, the operation is truly 2D. The fact that the input and output are 3D is simply a convenient way to package the separate channels, but the operation is, at its core, 2D. There are some clever mathematical tricks that could avoid separating the channels in practice, but the concept remains the same. This is not the case with neural network convolution. A quick thought experiment should convince you that not only is this not the case, but it can't be the case. Imagine that you're training a neural network that tries to identify bees. Oh god, not killer bees. I mean, like, the fun, friendly bees that our world's food supply relies on. One primary way to identify a bee is by the bright yellow color. So our neural network is going to want to filter to identify yellow. But if we look at red or green or blue separately, like in the image processing example, this would be impossible. We can't identify yellow just by looking at red, or just by looking at green, or just by looking at blue. We need to look at all these values together. Since we can't separate the channels out into individual 2D structures, the 2D convolution in neural networks becomes a fundamentally 3D operation. But don't worry, this doesn't really complicate it. 
we just need to make a few simple changes. The first change is that the neural network convolution truly takes a 3D input and produces a 3D output. We call this a feature map. Each channel of the depth is considered a feature. And an image is just a special case of a feature map where the features are red, green, and blue. Next, the filters become 3D to match the depth of the input. And after that, the operation is basically the same. We still take a weighted sum of the input area where the filter is the weights. This is why the filter needs to be 3D, so that it can have the same depth as the input and so that we have a weight for each value in the active spatial area. Note that we don't flip the filter like typical convolution. All the weights of the filter are learned during the neural network training. So if it needs to be flipped, uh, it can just learn a flipped filter. We don't need to spend precious computation resources flipping it ourselves. In this way, neural network convolution is really more like cross-correlation in image processing. But in practice, nobody really thinks about this. Now, to concretely finish our B example, it turns out that detecting yellow can be done on a pixel-by-pixel -pixel basis. We don't even need to look at a 3x3 area, so we can make a 1x1 one -one filter. A 1x1 one -one filter wouldn't be that useful in our 2D image processing situation, but in neural networks this is quite common. It's called pointwise convolution, and we can make a pointwise filter like this. Now let's watch that in action. You'll notice that there's another difference with our neural network convolution. With image processing, we got three channels in our output, red, green, and blue. But now we're left with a single feature in our neural network output, and it's not red, green, or blue. It's a new kind of feature that refers to yellowness. First of all, the fact that it's not red, green, or blue is fine because we're trying to build up conceptually higher level features to build an understanding of the image. We're not trying to produce a new image. Second of all, in a single convolutional layer, we'll have multiple filters and stack the results of those to build the output feature map. We only need a one by one filter to detect color, but we also want to detect features like edges and corners. And all the filters in the layer need to be the same size, so let's go ahead and make all of these 3x3. Three three. And that's a realistic neural network convolution layer. Let's watch these two different types of convolution side by side in action. And that wraps up the differences between neural network convolution and image processing convolution. I want to mention that I have recently created a Patreon, so if you enjoyed this video or my other content, please consider supporting me there. I'm planning on uploading early releases of my new videos on Patreon first, where patrons will get early access and be able to provide feedback. And to everybody who's been asking for a video on Transformers, I've heard your requests and I'm about halfway through a full-length video covering Transformers and self-attention. So subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified when it comes out. Thanks for watching.